and closer to him um, as we continue this fellowship and continue getting into his book and getting to know more from his book. Um, so um, I want to read a Thanksgiving Psalm, um, Psalm 100, which has been giving me strength and uh, yeah, just that feeling of Thanksgiving, Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his court with praise. Give thanks to him and pray, praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So that Psalm has been speaking to me. And then the verses or the um, things that I have been um, concentrating on is worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. So that tells me that every time I come to God, um, should be grateful and joyful. And when you are joyful, all things are good. And acknowledge that the Lord is God. He is our God. He made us. We are his people, sheep of his pasture. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is, go, is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So that's a promise to us that his faithfulness, because we are his, we are his chief, his faithfulness will go to our next generation. And so that gives us hope. And that gives us um, more reason to stick to him, to be with him, to always listen to him and to be with him in all that we do. Um, let us start with prayer this morning. God, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving. Thank you for what you have been to us. Thank you that you have given us the gift of life and we can't take that for granted. Thank you that we have this fellowship that we can come and praise your name, feel closer to you, and fellowship with our fellow believers. We know how important that is to keep us on the path and to keep us keeping your, our eyes on you. We ask you to open our hearts so that we may place you with joy and grandness, and that we open our minds so that whatever words and we receive today may enrich our lives. Also in a special way, we want to remember all the ones who are mourning. In a special way, the Gitao family who are known to us and everybody else else in the world who is mourning God. We ask you to give them strength, to give them peace and be with, with them. We ask you God to always guide us, to always, um, let us know in everything we have to turn to you. And when you turn to you, you give us strength and give, give us ability that we are able to live life with joy and peace. Open, open our hearts, Lord, as we worship you and as we praise you and as we try to become closer to you. For you have said that if we try to get closer to you, you want also to be closer to us. And you give us the strength, the peace, and the energy, energy to continue with love. Um, 
in life with joy and peace guided by you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Now, um, we'll go to the next uh, part of our session, which will be a place and worship. Um, Sister Christine, are you there? Hello, yes. Yes, yeah, over to you. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Mm. We are going to worship our God with a few songs and we will be blessed. The champion of the host above and captain of my destiny. In you alone, I make my boast. You reign alone as God of all. The champion of the host above and captain of my destiny. In you alone, I make my boast. You reign alone as God of all. We sing as one. With heaven's choir, the praises of our Savior King, Emmanuel, his God with us, he redeemed us from hell and sin. We sing as one with heaven's choir, the praises of our Savior, King Emmanuel, his God with us. He redeemed us from hell and sin. The champion of the host above and captain of my destiny in you alone i make my boast you reign alone as god of all the champion of the host above and captain of my destiny in you alone, I make my boast. You reign alone as God of all. You reign alone as God of all. Father, you reign alone as God of all. The champion of the host above and captain of my destiny. In you alone I make my boast. You reign alone as God of all. You reign alone as God of all. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has struggled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Father, 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 Holy Spirit, 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 come now, Holy Spirit, and take control. Hold me in your loving arms and make me whole. Wipe away all doubt and fear and take my pride. Draw me to your love and keep me by your side. Come now, Holy Spirit, and take control. Hold me in your loving arms and make me whole. Wipe away all doubt and fear and take my pride. Draw me to your love and keep me by your side. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, sing to the Father, 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 Holy Spirit, 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 Spirit. to Jesus, let him fill your soul. Let him take you in his arms and make you whole. As you give your life to him, he'll set you free. You will live and reign with him eternally. Give your life to Jesus, let him fill your soul. Let him take you in his arms and make you whole. As you give your life to him, he'll set you free. You will live and reign with him eternally. Jesus, 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 Father, 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 Holy Spirit, 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 Jesus, 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 Father, 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 take your glory, King of Kings. Take your glory, Lord of Lords. Take your glory. 
King of kings, it belongs to you alone. Take your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs to you alone. Take your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs to you alone. Hallelujah, King of kings. Hallelujah, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs to you alone. It belongs to you alone. It belongs to you alone. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you, Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you, Jesus, the Son of God. I trust in you. I trust in you in everything, Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you, Jesus, the Son of God. I trust in you. I trust in you. Take your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs to you alone in my life. Take your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. For it belongs to you alone in my life. Have your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs to you alone. It belongs to you alone. It belongs to you alone. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I give you thanks, O oh Lord. Take your glory, O oh Lord, from our lives. Take your glory, O oh Lord God. And it will be well with us, O oh Lord, my God. Take your glory, O oh Lord, in all areas of our lives, O oh Lord God. And it will go well with us, O oh Lord, my God. Thank you for this day, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for your mercies upon our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness upon our lives, O oh Lord God. Your mercies are new every morning, O oh Lord. We surrender this morning, O oh Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord, in our lives, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to overcome all sin, O oh Lord, my God, and may be ruling in our hearts, O oh Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, this morning, because, O oh Lord, you cannot dwell where there is sin, O oh Lord God. And because you forgive all our sins, O oh Lord, when we confess them to you, O oh Lord, 
Uh, we confess our sins this morning, O oh Lord, that you may walk with us, O oh Lord God, and help us, O oh Lord my God, for without you we cannot make it, O oh Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name this morning, amen. And amen. Thank you, Christine, for that beautiful worship. It always blesses our hearts, and we feel good when we listen and um, sing with you as we worship and uh, um, as we worship God and bless him for what he is in our lives. And indeed, um, today we want to confirm that Jesus is the captain of our destiny and he alone reigns in, our, in all our circumstances and in all our lives. And uh, we trust in him and we believe in him. And uh, we ask um, the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives. And then Jesus will get all the glory for the goodness that is in us and all the goodness that we experience. At the end of it all, we shall give Jesus the glory because that's where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you very much for that for, um, worship. Our hearts are enriched and uh, we feel good. Yes, amen. Now, um, we will continue with the, um, the purpose of this week, which we are celebrating the one year since the fellowship began. And this week we have dedicated it to um, testimonies of, of um, how the fellowship and the morning, the dawn prayers in altar in the morning has enriched our lives or affected our lives. And um, um, let us pray for all the people who will be giving their testimonies that we may be enriched through them by the words that they will give to us. God, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving. We know that you are our God and you do great things for us, but sometimes we forget. But always you have to us to always be thankful and to always <clears throat> give glory to you because we know it is you who does good things for us. Today there are fellowship members that are going to give um, testimonies about your goodness in their lives or how they have learned from you and how you have enriched their lives or how they have become closer to you since they have, tried, they have started trying to dive deeper into the word of God and trying to connect more with you. O open our hearts, Lord. Open our minds, Lord, so that we may run for them and enrich their lives, Lord, and bless them and be with them as they give the testimonies of your goodness to us, to us all, and especially to them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. And she is the one who is supposed to go next. Anne, are you there? I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chipura. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. I start now. Okay. Praise God. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I asked God for many years that I could pray early in the morning, and I tried to do it the power of the Holy Spirit in his mercy from time to time, but it wasn't consistent. And this year from May, the Lord provided a prayer meeting, which starts from 3 a.m. until the Holy Spirit stops us. It was so powerful and beautiful time by the grace of God. There are many people from different nations in the group. Our leader is South African, who is gloriously anointed. And by the grace of God, it was honored to be able to commit to prayer meetings, even though my days and body was too challenging. I did my best to adjust my body and daily life for this dead prayer meeting. However, I felt so weak and 
for I change routine rapidly. So I ask God to strengthen me and grant wisdom to keep uh, the prayer meeting. And on July, Pastor Julia invited me to this stone prayer altar, but back then I was not able to make it because I had one already. Praise the Lord. This September, I felt the Holy Spirit let me move to this prayer meeting and I asked Pastor Julia to help me to join this group. And here I am now, praise the Lord. I am so grateful for God and all of you. Still, I miss so much previous my prayer group, which overflowing the cooperative anointing and the strong presence of God, same as this group. And my best friend, the Holy Spirit, come back to me, to be honest, not to idolize anything or anyone because I put prayer meeting more than God. He looks on my heart. It's like, for example, the Lord gave me a job and I was so grateful for it, but little by little, I idolize my job. So which is foolish steward. And in his mercy, the Lord reminds me and this prayer journey that uh, I should manage wisely whatever God has provided me with pure heart. Like do not uh, take advantages. So and revelation and conviction from the Lord that overcome to be tempted to idolize anything. Uh, anything else for he waits the heart. Praise the Lord, um, hallelujah. As I grow in the grace of God, I am so convicted there is no one like our Lord Jesus Christ, truly. So I cry out to spirit of living God that I could be like Christ Jesus in this broken world. And he has mercy on me regardless of my faith and sins. In his grace so he opens my eyes to see things how the holy spirit sees uh bit by bit oh, oh. thank you lord so um, so i'm so grateful for and blessed to know god and his family all over the world hallelujah he is almighty god and faithful heavenly father who sent his only son while I was a sinner. Uh, just persistently, I believe and pray what I need to our Abba Father. Um, so everything fades away, and but the word of God remained the same. Uh, thank you so much for keeping me in prayer group, keeping me in path of what God wants me to do. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's it from me today. You are unmuted. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. That's very, very powerful. And um, and that's true. Sometimes we are idolize our jobs, our responsibilities, and things around us. And we forget that um, God deserves all the praise. He should be our idol, we should look up to him. And that's, um, that's um, a reminder for us this morning that um, God is our, let God be our all. Let all put our eyes onto him uh, because he loved us and we should wholeheartedly love him um, so that he, continue, he can continue being with us and uh, blessing us and uh, giving us peace. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, for me as well, this has been um, a life um, altering um, time for me because like Anne, I had felt that I needed um, fellowship with fellow um, um, Christians, 
And I also felt that I needed to um, dig deeper into the word of God, to, to study the Bible, to learn for more about it so that it speaks to my heart. And um, I was looking around until um, Pastor Juria invited me to the group. And that was in um, February uh, this year. And uh, it has been an eye-opening, unleashing experience for me. Um, it has enriched my life. I can't, and um, as Juria said the other day, um, discipline it has made me have the discipline of waking up in the morning at five o'clock. Um, and if you don't, you feel something is missing. And that's good for me because that's what I want. I want to feel that if I don't get deep into the word of God, if I don't speak to God daily, if I don't spend time with God, I feel that something is missing because that's what God wants in our relationship with him. And um, of course, as Christians, and I think this was a hard part for me is that when you are a new Christian, sometimes you think, oh, I've become a Christian. So my life will flow freely. You know, all my prayers will be answered according to my will or whatever. I will not come across um, different or hard, hard things in life. But what I have discovered is that in the Bible, it is written that we'll get tribulations. They are trouble in this world because we are in this world. So in John um, 16, verse 33, it says, I've said these things to you. I've said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. So in Jesus, we may have peace. In the world, you'll, get, you'll have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So I've, as I've been digging deeper in the word of God, I've taken that to heart that Jesus came that we may have peace in him. And in this world, we will have tribulations. But he went through all this himself and he overcame. So even us will overcome. So what, what, what we have to do is that when these tribulations come, when these issues come, our responsibility is to turn to him and ask for guidance, for, um, ask for guidance from him. And he has given us the Holy Spirit to be our guide. So that's what we should remember because he, it's written also in First Corinthians past, chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. So all the things that we go through, other people have gone through. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted to be beyond your ability. So that's his assurance for us, that whatever we go through, he will see us through. Um, but, the, but with the temptation, he also provides the way for us to escape, that we may be able to endure it. So he's faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond our control. And when we turn to him, he will give us a way to go through all it. And through it, we will all be enriched and empowered. And so this gives me peace in whatever I'm going through. That, And this has been a mind-opening thing for me because when an issue came up before, Acting in my human way, you get angry, you get worked up, you try to solve it through your own um, ability. But having learned the word of God, when an issue comes up, now what I do is pray to God and pray for peace in going through the issue and ask for guidance that God may guide me on how to go through with it. Because he has also said, um, in First John 5, for first, um, 14 to 15, that this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, 
we know that we have what he asked for. So all what we have to be is be in his will. Study his word, know his ways, know that sometimes um, what we think is what we need is not what we do need. He knows best. And when we trust, trust in him, when in every situation we say, God, this is what we want, but if it is your will, then our prayer is already answered because whatever we get is what he wills for us. And whatever he wills for us is what is best for us. So this um, fellowship and this um, digging deeper into the word of God has enriched me and made me a better Christian and um, also a better um, representative of Christ in this world. And we are hoping, um, praying that God continues um, guiding me and guiding us and uh, um, enabling us to always know that we have to ask the Holy Spirit to be our guide. And when the Holy Spirit is our guide and they take control or who have peace and strength to handle whatever life brings us because God has uh, promised us that whatever he wants for us is what is best for us. And he, he knows it all. That, that's my um, testimony for today. And now um, our next uh, person is um, Jerusha. Are you there, Jerusha? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day today. It is such a unique day that we come before the Lord just to testify about his goodness and to encourage each other on, the, on this walk. I bless the Lord so much because of the church in Australia. I bless the Lord because of the church in UK. I bless the Lord because of the church in Kenya. For sure, you have been you you have uh, you have been a challenge to my salvation. You have been a challenge to I personally. You have been a challenge to the church in Kenya because of uh, the zeal that the church in Australia has. I must testify that the zeal that you people in Australia have is unique. It is, uh, it is a different one. It is not so easy for first world countries like Australia, the way we know Australia, the way you are committed to your sheets and everything. It is not so easy for first world countries to be waking up and thinking about the Lord. But you, you have been set apart because of the Lord's purpose. I bless the Lord so much because of Australia. Indeed, when we look at the geographical position, Australia is positioned in a, in ge geographically, you are in a very unique position that if you could have known, if Australia could have known what you hold, they could have risen up and worked for the Lord. Australia is the more is the is the is the continent that sees sun very very early before any other continent sees the sun. So to me, I found Australia being one of the watchmen. It is the watchman tower. It has the watchman tower. As written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, verses 11, the Lord raises a watchman because Israel had been invaded by the Assyrian Empire. Assyrian Empire was one of the strongest empires that were attacking Israel. So in Isaiah, we see the Lord raising a watchman to watch over Israel. And as you people have been raised, it is you to watch over the spiritual growth of other continents. 
It is you to take the mantle. It is you to that other continents can come and inquire about the Lord. Because we see in that Isaiah 21, verses 11, you will read at your own time, the, the people going and asking the watchman, Watchman, what do you see? They were being attacked, and Watchman was guarding the walls of Israel. So uh, in our normal circumstances, Watchman doesn't sleep. They are always awake, just the way you people are awake. So it is us to come and ask you, what is the Lord saying? It is us to come and inquire about the Lord from the continent of Australia that we have to, to wake up and ask, watchman, what do you see? And then it is you to tell us the instructions and we get the, 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 what the Lord wants. And we get how, how our safety is. Because so far, the, the earth is being attacked in different ways, spiritually, provision-wise, financially. Our health is being attacked. Our finances are being, our children are being attacked. So it is you, the church in Australia, to act as our watchman so that we can get the instructions that, is, that the Lord wants, so that we can count ourselves safe in our safety, that watchman is there looking over us. I bless the Lord because of all the ministries in the dawn altar, I bless the Lord first because of the worshipers. May the Lord bless you, worshipers that have been ministering. You've given me a challenge because of your zeal, because of your obedience, because of the discipline that you have, because of what you're doing. As worshipers in the house, you are the intercessors and you are also in the priesthood. So you must know that you are holding a very high office. Your office is one of the highest offices recognized in the ministry of the Lord. So as worshipers, I just want to give you a thumb up because you've never left us go alone. Even as we minister, we know we have intercessors. When we are ministering, we know we have people who have cleared the way. We know we have people who have gone ahead of us. We know we have people who have destroyed all the evil attacks. So you as the worshipers, I bless the Lord because of you, because even if I'm ministering, I'm very new in this don't, all, don't, don't alter, but when I'm ministering, I have no fear because I know the intercessors are there. I bless the Lord because of all the ministers of the gospel. For sure, you have challenged me. It has given me another discipline it has raised my standard of reading the Bible. It has raised my standard of wanting to know the Lord more and more. To some extent, I bless the Lord so much because of my sister Ruth. She's the one who invited me to this altar. In fact, we are so many in our family. We were born 10 of us. Ruth being our firstborn, I am the seventh born. And uh, with Ruth, we always see Ruth as our mother. Because when you talk about orphans, we are complete orphans. We don't have father, we don't have mother, we don't have grandfather, we don't have grandmother. So who, the only person that we look upon is our sister Ruth. For sure, Ruth is a strict one. Even calling Ruth is, is not easy. When you want to call Ruth, you must have to note down what you want to tell her because she doesn't take anything. But since we started this don this don don altar, I find myself calling my sister even three times in a week, and she 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 always listens to me because we have something that we share. Despite the blood relationship, we have grown in another relationship in another family of a spiritual relationship. Now, I bless the Lord because of my sister Ruth so much, because of even assisting me to enter into this don don altar. About Pastor Julia, Pastor Julia is one of our kind. And uh, the love that the church has is in, I cannot compare, it is unique. 
The love that the church has in Australia is a unique one. I didn't believe when Pastor Julia told me that she's coming to visit me because where I stay, I stay in the rural parts of Kenya. And where I am, it is the rural of rurals. Now I'm in the rural of rural. When Pastor Julia told me that she's coming to Eldoret, I was like, wow, are we meeting in Eldoret? And then she told me, no, I'm not coming to Eldoret. I'm coming to where you are. Where are you? I told her I'm in the rural part of Nandi Hills. For sure, if you hear Nandi Hills, it is hills, it is valleys, it is I don't know. The roads are bad, I wish you knew. It is a very, it is, a, it is not a very comfortable place to come. But Pastor Julia came. For sure, that is love that is unmeasurable. If we read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, the Bible says that seek, the Bible says that, but eagerly desire the greater gift. And then it goes ahead and says, and now, I will show you the most excellent way. Then about the most excellent way, now he talks about love. The love and the humility that I saw from Pastor Julia, it made me to go back to repentance because I've never had such love. It is beyond, it is unique. It is a different, it is a different one. In fact, I cannot express it, but I just say I bless the Lord so much because she managed to come. When she told me she was coming, I asked, are you coming to visit me? She said, yes, I want to see you. And uh, previously she was with my sister Grace. So I asked Sister Grace, were you with Pastor Julia? Yes, what did she say? She said she wants to see you. Now, does she even know where I am? Grace told me she said she's coming and for sure she came. And we, we, we spend the night under my roof. I wish you could see where I, where, I, where I stay. It's not a very comfortable area, but we were with her. I cannot believe it up to now. Let me read from the book of Second John as I continue because I'm seeing the time is running. Second John, the Bible says, the elder is writing to the chosen lady so the elder is writing and saying to the chosen lady and her children whom I love in the truth and not I only, but also all who knows the truth because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I'm not writing you a new command, but one we have heard from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his commands is that you walk in love. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God's God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcome him shares in his wicked work. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your chosen sisters send their greetings. Amen. The children in Kenya have sent their greetings to the church in Australia because they also met Pastor Julia. The Bible is telling me very well that in verses eight, it says, 
Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Being rewarded fully is eternity. When the Lord wants to reward you fully, he will give you eternity. That is what he calls blessedness. The Lord talks about love. He talks about the truth. We know about the truth. We, we have been, we, we have been in, in churches, you have been reading Bibles, but with different revelations. I thank the Lord because of the dawn prayer altar, because we have different revelations from different ministries. I bless the Lord because of all the pastors who have been ministering to us. I bless the Lord because of Pastor Jesse. I bless the Lord because of Pastor Alex. I bless the Lord because of Patricia. I bless the Lord because of Alice. Alice, you are a technical one. I bless the Lord because of you. You have really challenged my, 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 my salvation. In fact, you are one in a million. You are different. I bless the Lord because of you. I bless the Lord because of all the evangelists. I bless the Lord because of bringing us together as the body of Christ. The Bible tells me that in a, in, in, in a body, there are so many parts, but you cannot take another part to do the other part. You cannot use your hands to walk while you have your legs. Unless you don't have your legs, that's when you can use your hands to walk. Now, if we have the hand, we have the leg, the body of Christ is complete. You cannot take the, the, the works of the eyes and give it to the ears. It will not perform. But you cannot... You cannot be complete without the eye and with the ear alone. So because of all the ministries, because of all the, the, the categories in, in the body of the Christ, I say, I bless the Lord because of you. May the Lord give you favor. May the Lord give you grace. May you have mercy and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, his son. The Bible tells me about eternity. I know very well that in eternity, we will know each other. I know very well that Lazarus, when Lazarus was in heaven, he knew about the rich man. He saw the rich man and they even talked. So I know very well that one day in eternity, if we stick to this, to this route, if we stick in repentance, if we stick in salvation, the Lord will reward us fully and we will meet in heaven. And we'll see each other face to face. Even if we'll not be able to see each other face to face on earth, I know when we'll be in heaven in our father's kingdom, we'll be able to see each other face to face. What a beautiful day will that be? What a beautiful day will that be? When I'll meet Pastor Julia in heaven and ask her, where is Pastor Jesse? And then she, 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 she shows me she, there he is. What a beautiful day will that be? When I meet Julia in heaven and ask her, where is my sister Ruth? My sister Ruth says she's here. What a beautiful day that will that be. Let us just try for the full, for, for, for the full reward that the Lord is talking about. That is the entry into the kingdom of God. That when we will meet there, we will, we, we, we will not weep again. We will not, we will not tire again. We will not be waking up so early. We will not, this, we are just preparing for the entry. It will, be just, it will be just singing and, 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 and praising the Lord. What a great day that day will be when we'll meet in heaven, seeing each other face to face. Because maybe on earth it will be difficult because of the positions that we are in. But when we'll meet in heaven, I tell you. And now, when you will not go there, and then I ask Pastor Julia, where is somebody? And then he tell, she, she tells me she did not manage. How will that look like? If she will just tell me, oh, where is that sister? And then she tells me, no, she did not manage it. It will not be good. Let us work so hard on our salvation so that we may enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says in, in chapter 8, in verses 8, John, 2 John verses 8, that watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Don't lose what you have worked for. Don't lose what you, are, what you are waking up for. Why are we waking up so early in Australia? Because we want the, to, to enter the kingdom of God. We want, because we want to see our Lord face to face. That is why we are waking up so early, just to prepare. The way Noah was told to prepare, he prepared for so long. But at the end of it, he was redeemed. He, he, the, Lord, the Lord remembered 
No. So let us just work on our salvation so that that day, when that day comes, we will be able to be rewarded fully. That is the blessings that the Lord is talking about. That is the kingdom of God. That is everything that we have. Everything is, 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 is useless, according to lamentation. He says everything is useless. And he even says he doesn't like anything about the world. Let us just try to enter the kingdom of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22, we see something about voluntary obedience. When you are obedient, you will serve the Lord the way he wants. The Lord says he's not pleased in sacrifices, but he's pleased in obedience. That is 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22, voluntary obedience. If you are obedient, you will not be forced to do anything. You'll just be doing it for the Lord because the Lord is much happy with obedience. I can see our time is running out. Please take it back. I'm so blessed. I bless the Lord because of the church in Australia. Thank you. I'm so much humbled. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sister Jerusha, thank you. What a um, reminder that what's important is what we are looking for at the end, that time that we shall all be together, that time that we shall all look out and see each other and um, praise God because we have overcome. Let us remember voluntary obedience because in that, there yeah, is the, the pay at the end of it is um, life in glory, life with, in, with God and life, eternal life, which is what we are all working towards. And God and the Holy Spirit will help us to add that. Thank you so much for that. Oh, what a blessing that we have had today and what a testimony to what God is doing in our lives and what he is continuing to do in our lives. We thank him, we thank him very much for that. Um, just a reminder before we go on to conclude, just a reminder that next week is the fasting week and the um, welfare service um, on Friday. So we will start our fasting on, um, 26 will be the Friday 26 will be the welfare service and then we'll start the fasting from the Wednesday 24th Wednesday Thursday and Friday and conclude on um, 26 uh, for those who will be able to attend um, live it will be at 560 Goodwood Road um, and uh, God will help us to get there. So let us prepare ourselves for the fasting. And uh, God will bless us. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, Friday the 25th is when the, um, the welfare service is. And now, because time, of, time is up, let us remember to remember all the testimonies that we have been given. Let us remember to always seek God and dig deep into his word and he shall bless us. And, let us, and I wish you all a blessed day today. And now let us say the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye.